Hey everyone, I'm going to do a video now on electricity. I don't know how this is going to go. I was going to film it like I usually do, but there's so many symbols and things that I need to discuss that it makes more sense for me to do a voiceover. So I hope it's not too boring. Um, I'm just picking out all the bits of electricity which you'll need for the exam. So it's, this video is focused on making sure you get all the marks in the exam rather than giving you a massive overview of electricity because if you want that you're probably better else looking at BBC Bite Size better off looking at BBC Bite Size or something anyway enough of me talking I'm just going to go straight into the different symbols used of the electrical components found within an electrical circuit so first of all the most straightforward ones and I apologize oh my goodness what is that it looks like a lamp right this is a cell and what that does is it provides the push needed to drive the electrons around the circuit in order that you can light up bulbs, get motors turning, that sort of thing. Ignore the weird squiggle. I'm so sorry about that. It's terrible because it makes it look like I mean to draw that. It's not. The cell is right there. If you have more than two cells together or two or more cells together, that makes more sense, like this, you have a battery. So just make sure you can um, distinguish between a cell and a battery. Next up I'm going to draw a bulb, so that's just a circle with a cross in the middle. Um, after that I'm going to get slightly more complicated, I'm going to draw a resistor, so you need to draw a rectangle with two lines poking out either side. That is a resistor and what that does is it obviously alters the resistance of a circuit and that basically means altering how difficult it is for the electrons to flow around the circuit. If I draw a line going all the way through it, that's no longer a resistor, this is a fuse. Remember a fuse is a safety device. You find them in plugs and they're there to stop fires being caused if the current gets too high. If the current gets too high, the wire in the fuse melts, breaking the circuit and stopping any danger. Going back to resistors then, I'm going to draw my regular resistor again and then this time I'm going to draw an arrow going through it. This therefore means, don't ask me why, that it is a variable resistor and it's one that you can alter the resistance of. Just to give you a little overview, why not? If you have a resistor like this, right, if you increase the temperature of the resistor, then what you find is the resistance of the circuit increases. And the reason why is because of this. In a metal, this is also chemistry, you find that the structure is very much like this. It is positive metal ions. I'm going to put positive charges on these in a very regular pattern surrounded by what we call a sea of delocalized electrons, which I'm calling E- minus because electrons are negatively charged. Now those electrons flow around the circuit carrying the current. Now if you increase the temperature, what happens is you increase the kinetic energy of the positive metal ions and what they do is they vibrate more. Now if they vibrate more it means that they impede, they prevent the electrons flowing around the circuit so easily, therefore increasing the resistance. So that means if you increase the temperature of a regular resistor, you find that the um, resistance increases because the metal ions move more and impede the flow of the electrons. Now there is an exception to this and it's a special kind of resistor called a thermistor which I'm drawing right now. Thermistors are unusual in that if you increase their temperature, then the resistance decreases. And for AQA, you don't need to know why, but it's basically because they're not made out of a regular metal. They're made out of silicon, which means they behave differently. But don't worry about that. I just want you to remember that if you increase the temperature of a thermistor, then the resistance decreases. And likewise, if you decrease the temperature of a thermistor, the resistance increases. Right, I think I've said enough about that one. Now we're going to look at this version of a resistor. Oh my god, can you please draw it in when you're doing it more circular than that because that is horrendous. And it has a couple of arrows coming into it. And this is an LDR, which is a light-dependent resistor, one which depends on light. And if you increase the light levels, then you find that resistance decreases. If you decrease the light levels, then the resistance increases. And an everyday application of this is street lights. See, like I told you, I'm just telling you little um, pieces of information that may or may not come up in the exam. Next up, I'm going to draw a diode, which is an arrow like this. And... A diode only allows current to flow in one direction, so the direction of the arrow shows which direction that current will be flowing, and in this case it will be going from left to right, so no current can flow the other way. If you draw that with a couple of arrows coming out of it, then it's a light-emitting diode, so it allows the current to flow in one direction, and it emits light at the same time. Right, have I forgotten anything? The simple things like the wire, just looks like that, a switch, 
looks like this. That's an open switch. This is a closed switch, so obviously when it's open, the current can't flow because the circuit isn't complete. You have things like that, which is a voltmeter, and what that does is it measures the voltage, otherwise known as potential difference of the circuit. Make sure you're happy with interchanging between those two um, two names because they mean exactly the same thing, and obviously that measures in volts. Circle with an A in it is an ammeter, and that's measuring the current of the circuit, and that's also in that's in amps. You might see a circle like this, which is just standing for a motor. Um, have I forgotten anything? Probably, but, oh well, if I can't think of it now, then it's probably not that important, she says. Right, so, let's move on. I'm going to open a new page. Ah, uh, how do I do this? I'm so slow and rubbish, sorry. Okay, new page opened. So, next up, you need to know some simple circuit rules. Um, and that is things like how you add an ammeter or a voltmeter to a circuit. So if I just draw a really simple circuit now, um, I'm going to just add a cell. And actually I'm only going to add a bulb because I can't be really bothered to draw anything else. So the question is, where do you add the voltmeter and the ammeter to this? So what you do is you add the ammeter in series and what that means is you just add it to the main part of the circuit. And that's because it's measuring the current so the flow of charge around the circuit. So you can just pop that into the main part of the circuit. Now, the voltmeter, as I said, measures the potential difference. And what that means is that it's measuring the amount of um, useful energy transferred to a component. And it's measuring, therefore, the difference in the amount of energy going into a component, component and the amount of energy coming out. So therefore, it makes total sense to draw it in parallel. And that means as a separate branch like this. So you draw the voltmeter in parallel as a separate branch around the component that you wish to find out the voltage of. So the potential difference means the difference in energy transferred before the bulb and after it. So I'm going to pop it in a parallel circuit around the bulb like that. And if you're struggling to remember, just remember potential difference means the difference in something. So if you just popped it into series, it wouldn't be measuring the difference between anything. I hope that makes sense. Um, and they love asking questions like, what's wrong with the circuit? And you would often see that the ammeter and the voltmeter are in the wrong place, so just make sure you're clear on these rules. And the other thing is that the flow of charge comes out of the positive terminal, which is the longer line of the cell, um, and flows around to the negative one, so make sure your arrows are facing this way. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, next up is the difference between series and parallel circuits. So if I just draw a um, series circuit there, and say that the light bulb is a certain brightness, what we can do is we can add another bulb, like say we add it here, and it seems pretty obvious that the brightness of both bulbs will decrease, and if they're the same, then they'll be half as bright as they were initially, and that's because each electron that flows out of the cell has to flow through both of them and it has to share its energy across both bulbs, so you find that they are dim. Um, and it doesn't matter how many bulbs you add, you're going to keep decreasing the brightness. And I hope it makes sense to you that the bulb, the sorry, the cell will run out of charge just as fast as if there were five bulbs as if there is one, because it's either giving all of its charge to the one bulb or it's sharing it out equally between the five. But either way, it's giving out the same amount of charge, so it will run out just as quickly. So series circuits are pretty crap, to be honest. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh well. Um, now I'm going to draw a parallel circuit and I'm going to do a similar setup with two bulbs but just like this. Okay, in this case what will happen is the bulbs will be just as bright as they were before and the reason is is because each electro electron that gets pushed around the circuit it has to have a path, to, it has to choose a path to go through so it will either go through the first branch or go through the second branch, but it can't go through both at the same time. So that means the output of the cell needs to be twice as much now that there are two bulbs in parallel. So what you find is the brightness of the bulbs are the same, and therefore the cell will run out twice as quickly, and that's because more electrons need booting out per second. And there are a couple of um, circuit rules you need to know, which is things like this. So in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere and then the voltage of the individual components adds up to what is coming out of the cell. Whereas in a parallel circuit, 
Why am I trying to delete this in the middle of discussing it? So annoying. You find that the voltage is the same everywhere. And the current adds up. And if this isn't making a huge amount of sense, I'll show you some examples um, soon when I get on to the mathematical um, part of electricity. But that's just worth bearing in mind. So let's move on to another slide. And we're just going to quickly talk about Ohm's Law. I really don't think you need to know Ohm's Law off by heart. I've never seen that come up. You just need to be able to understand it and recognise it. So Ohm's Law states that the current through a resistor at a constant temperature is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistor. And that means, basically, that if you draw a graph of current, remember current is given by I and potential difference, you find that in a resistor you have a straight line because directly proportional means a straight line. If I had a ruler, that would be straighter. Um, so yeah, because as the current increases, sorry, as the current increases, yeah, the voltage will increase. However, some components don't obey Ohm's law. And the key examples here, and I really would only learn this much, is the filament bulb, which has a very characteristic S-shaped curve, and the diode, which looks like this. Just be able to recognize these things. And what that tells you um, from the filament bulb's point of view is what I was trying to explain earlier, which is that as the resistance of the metal filament increases, as its temperature increases, and this is because the ions in the metal filament vibrate more as the temperature increases, so they resist the passage of the electrons through the filament more. Um, the diode has this distinct, distinctive shape because in the forward direction, um, you find that the current is not directly proportional to the potential difference because it is not an ohmic conductor, and in the reverse direction, the current is negligible. So the resistance is much higher. And if you don't like what I just said, literally just know that that is a diode right here. Because that's how they always, 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 always draw them. Um, I think I'm getting near the end of what I want to talk about. I just wanted to say that resistance has the unit of ohms. And in a series circuit, the resistance of the individual components adds up to the total resistance of the circuit. Um, and I think now it's time to do a couple of calculations using some formula triangles so that you're happy with what's going on there. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple of questions. In fact, I'm going to type them out now. So a 4 volt battery can supply current of 5 amps for, for 20 minutes before it needs recharging. Calculate how much charge the battery can provide before it needs recharging. At this point, what I always do is I draw out my formula triangles because why not? It's good to get your head um, nice and into the question and knowing that you actually know stuff that you can use. So the first one is voltage is current times resistance. The next one is charge is current times time. And then finally, the third electrical triangle that I um, use is work done is voltage times charge. And just remember that the units of charge are coulombs, so at the end of a question write a capital C, and they're really fussy about how you write the units, so make sure it's a capital C rather than a lowercase c in order to get the mark. And remember I just said that resistance is measured in ohms, and the sign for an ohm is like this, which I've drawn really badly. Anyway, let's look at the question then. Calculate how much charge the battery can provide before it needs recharging. So we're looking for a triangle that has Q in it. Um, so there's two of those. And what else have I been told? Well, I've got the current because I've been told 5 amps. And I've been given the time, which is 20 minutes. So what I'm going to use is the QIT triangle. So I'm going to write out, because it's always good practice to do this, Q equals I times T. I is 5. Okay, T is 20 minutes, but remember that's not very um, scientific, so we're going to convert that into seconds by doing 20 times 60. And the answer here is 6,000. And like I just said, the units of charge are coulombs, so I'm going to write a capital C here. B, each coulomb of charge from the battery can carry 3 joules of energy. Calculate how much work the battery can do before it needs recharging. Okay, so... For part B, you're going to use the formula W equals V times Q. V has been given as 4. And Q is something that I just worked out, which is 6,000. So what's 4 times 6,000? Well, it is 24,000. And work done is measured in 
joules. Um, so there's the answer right there. Okay, let's look at another type of question. Okay, so I've drawn a horrendous um, circuit here, but hopefully it will still manage to help you at least some way. So this is an example of the sort of thing you could get in the exam. Um, we can see that we have a series circuit with a battery made up of three cells, an ammeter with a reading of 0.5 amps and three regular resistance in series. We've been given two of their resistances. We don't know the third one and a voltmeter has been added in parallel around resistance number two. So calculate the total potential difference across the battery. Okay, so all you have to do here, because remember potential difference is the same as voltage, is add up those three readings. So that's two plus two plus two, which is six volts. Nice and straightforward. Okay, work out the total resistance. So it'd be tempting here to try and add up all the resistances of the individual resistors. We can't do that because we don't know the resistance of resistor three. So we're gonna have to do this a different way and we're gonna use this equation triangle. So resistance is V divided by I. The V is six, which I just worked out. I is 0 0.5 given by the ammeter and therefore the answer is 12 and the units are ohms. Okay, finally calculate the resistance of R3. So, if we know that the total resistance is 12 ohms, but we've been given R1 and R2, that's 6 ohms, that tells us the difference between those two values will be R3's value. So 12 takes 6 is obviously 6, and that is 6 ohms. Right, I really hope that this video is helpful. Like I said, it's not supposed to be like a massive tutorial on everything on electricity. It's more what I think will come up in the exams and the way in which you need to approach your learning of this topic and the sorts of questions that will come up. Um, so I hope you found it helpful and I'm sorry about my horrendous drawing and I'll see you soon. Bye!